please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the 5 January 2015 Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting. Roman 1, public comment. Those wishing public comment, please take the podium. Seeing none, Roman 2, announcements and community calendar. Ah, um, well, we've made it into the new year, which is a good thing for all of us. But uh, my comment this evening actually comes from Seacoast Sunday yesterday. I thought that was rather neat on the editorial page. A uh, gentleman, Jeff Chidester, did my picks for people of the year, and the third individual was Senator Stiles. And I thought that was very nice. It says, for many, the word politician too often has a negative connotation. That's why so many in New Hampshire do not look upon or refer to Senator Nancy Stiles as a politician. Whether you agree with Nancy, she's one of those rare exceptions who commits herself to the harsh conditions of public service with the sole motivation to help people. Nancy does not serve to improve her station in life. She serves to improve others' lives. And it does go on a little bit. I, I won't read the whole thing, but I thought that was a very nice compliment to a, a senator who works hard with us and for us. That's it. Yeah, I just would, um, it's already happened, but I don't know if anyone was down to see the fireworks uh, for even from my Christmas, e New Year's Eve. But that is the most people I've ever seen at the beach in the wintertime. It was, every space was taken. Uh -huh. um, it's a shame that there wasn't something else going on. And I think that some of the groups that are out in Hampton are looking for a way to, uh, I mean, this was a huge success by any standards. I saw people waiting to get into that Blue Ocean Society uh, two blocks long waiting wow. to get in. I've never seen that in the summer. And when it was time to leave, and I went and parked my car down there because I wanted to see. And people were out of their cars. People were in their pajamas. I mean, it was all sorts of people. And <clears throat> when it was time to leave, I went home to where I live at, at Boar's Head. And then I had to go out again. And when I went to leave, I noticed all the cars were headed car to car, backed up, going north on Ocean Boulevard. That never happened. So it had to be mostly people from Hampton that were uh, partaking in this. Because when I went down to go to get on 101, I was afraid there would be even more cars. There weren't any. Oh, so I huh. think it's something that the people of Hampton really enjoy. And um, I think some group should take ownership of it and make it into something even bigger than it is, because it has a lot of potential. And it wasn't that it wasn't cold, but it was a nice clear night. And there were a lot. The people were really having fun, and there was a nice display also. And the Hampton Beach Village District does pay for it, and I think a lot of people think the town pays for it or that the Chamber of Commerce. But I think it's pretty much the Village District that's doing it. And there, I didn't. The state is also there, and there were people partaking in that. But I think it could be something much bigger than it is. That's good. I think you're right. The village district did a very nice job putting it on. It was a, it was a very nice display. Uh, there were as many people down there on an average Wednesday night. Uh, there was, wasn't a parking space from Haverhill Street to Boys Head. They were all full. Um, and I think you're right. I think if, if, if you have good weather, people will come down for that. And it was an opportunity for some people that some other organizations that could have had sold hot chocolate or whatever to yeah something could that would be have been nice and, and and done a good event but that's also weather related too and mm -hmm. next, next year it could be i've been down there before when they've had it we've had to climb over snow banking so mm -hmm. but it was a very good display and i uh, i appreciate the precinct for doing that i think it's taking off is what's happening i think good. you're right every year it's been better good so yes uh i want to ditto on uh Mary Louise is uh, Senator Stiles and congratulate her for being named one of the people of the year. And it, I think it's absolutely true that she does think of her constituents before thinking of the politics or her party, which is very good. And uh, I was out of town, but if I'd been here, I would have gone to the fireworks, and I'm glad they were so nice. Thank you. Mr. Welch? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, those that uh, serve the, the public uh, is 
Nancy Stiles does uh, are right in line with uh, folks on this board, uh, especially uh, Jim Waddell today, who spent much of his day uh, working a, a complex uh, tax issue with uh, the town attorney and the uh, tax assessor. And Jim, thanks for your effort and your research and your hard work on that. We appreciate it very much. Uh, Rick brings up the salient and poignant aspect of Hampton Beach. It is a 12-month a year destination. There's a lot of good things going on there all year round. And as we are finally into 2015, uh, kudos to those that uh, reside in this town, that conduct commerce in this town, that, that live in this town, that raise their children in this town uh, for 2014. And when uh, you're, you're in the midst of uh, the, the seasonal challenges and the population surges in our first responders. Uh, God bless the men and women that serve this town and work for this town. And uh, I think it's a fabulous, fabulous team. And uh, it's, it's just a, a world-class community. So uh, great job in 2015. And we look, uh, 2014, look forward to a great 2015. Roman three consent agenda, a motion. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. I'll second. Thank you, ma'am. Do we need a brief explanation from the town manager on the berms, just so the public can have clarification? Let me just go through it, and then we'll, we'll, we'll hand it over to Fred, please. Uh, there are myriad uh, 2015 veterans tax credit requalifications. 25. 25, thank you. Uh, number two is lease for berms on town property. Three is permit for construction of berms on town property. Four is forest fire warden appointment, Jameson R. Ayotte, sir. Chairman, members of the board, um, <coughs> comments. Uh, the lease for berms has been retitled to lease for berms and embankments. Some of them don't quite qualify as berms, but they are embankments. This is uh, built facilities, land facilities on town land, not on private property. Um, the idea here is we have properties that are located in the, um, the inland areas of, of wetlands abutting private properties where uh, because of tide uh, changes, for instance, tonight we have a pitch, just about a full moon, so we're going to have an astronomical high tide. Uh, they have embankments or berms built around their properties, some on town property, uh, to help keep the property stable. And they, uh, they outfit those with, uh, in the case of inland areas around the, uh, the marsh, they outfit those with smaller stones than they would on the ocean which has heavy surf that they have to combat. Um, the, law, the law requires us to lease those properties. Um, the, the, the lease in this particular case for these small facilities, which are two to three feet high, uh, we pegged at a dollar a year or five dollars for five years. Uh, and they do have an agreement. They have to sign with the town. And they do have to uh, have a rider put on their homeowner's insurance so there is some protection should an accident occur on the town portion of the property. This is much more simplified than the ones for the gigantic um, berms and embankments that we're protecting down along the ocean front, where we have massive um, facilities that are being built and we have to protect the town from damages that could occur if somebody should fall down there or uh, there should be a catastrophic event where some of these uh, seawalls uh, collapse or move. Uh, as you remember, we had that in 2007. We had some seawalls collapse, and we almost lost six cottages. Thanks to the town, we didn't. But uh, so this is a very simple, a very simple form for places like uh, um, Island Path and, and, and Glade Path, where they have very small embankments and and and, uh, and berms that need to be protected. But the protection is actually on town property. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none. <coughs> Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 4, approval of minutes. 1, December 15, 2014, public session minutes. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Wolsey Griffin, any further discussion? Seeing none. I had a correction on one of okay, these. We'll slow it down I just want to make sure. Thank you, ma'am. I have a little yellow thing in here. Mm-hmm. Ah, it's the next one. Okay. This yeah. is fine. That is unanimous for December 15th to December 15th, 2014, non-public session sealed minutes. So move. Second. Bridal. All those in favor? Unanimous. Three, December 22, 2014 minutes. So move. Second. But I have one. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Second. Correction. Bridal second. Your correction, please. <coughs> 
on page 7 of 17, the very top sentence, uh, this road slops down from Winnicott. Kind of, I really think I, th I said slopes. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, I didn't. Oh, I caught one, Jim. Yeah, it's good. Approved with Woolsey uh, correction. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Roman 5, appointments. Mm -hmm. One, Doug Brown, Alpha 86 Woodland Road Subdivision. Sir, please. Excellent. Thank you. Please sounds, have like, sounds like the town needs a, a lobster festival on the 31st. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or something similar. Doug, if you're more comfortable and want to sit at the okay. table, you're <clears throat> welcome to do that. So I want to thank you for getting me on the, uh, the agenda. Um, I guess just uh, my wife is with me. Uh, just a little background. We built our house on Hunter Drive 21 years ago. Uh, raised our child here, and uh, it's a fabulous place to live. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons I wanted to come before the board. Um, we just went through a pretty uh, miserable set of hearings with the planning board over a subdivision at uh, 86 Woodland Road. Um, and I think uh, one of the things I want to do is I want to thank Mr. McNamara and Ms. Carnaby, I think that's how you say her name, yeah. not just for their no votes on this project, but for being compassionate, asking some questions, and actually acting like they're interested in what the public had to say uh, in these in this, these particular hearings. Um, and I'm sure you folks are aware of this, but if you're not, just to kind of outline, this project got approved despite the fact of some very curious things. Number one, the Conservation Committee rejected this project when they first came in front of them. Uh, and uh, I guess they were asked to work with the developers and the engineering firm uh, to redo the plans. Uh, I think they did that. One of the recommendations was rather than put in five houses, put in four houses, create some more room, uh, because this is going to be built on wet, wetlands. Uh, and um, the developer rejected that. And to my knowledge, the planning committee, uh, the planning board committee did not include that as uh, a part of a requirement to approve the subdivision. Um, the second one was, I'm, I'm sure you're aware that Aquarian Waterworks has some concerns about a well. There are wells there. Um, and they put in some uh, conditions in their letter. They asked that the land stay in its current condition in their letter. Um, they obviously stated there was some risk, albeit it might be low, that there, was, there could be contamination. Uh, they put three conditions that they thought were reasonable as part of the project. And again, I don't think any of those conditions were put in as a part of the approval of the subdivision. <coughs> um, the town attorney, and I have not seen the memo, uh, I think it's an internal memo, but my understanding and from what I heard at the board was that there were two uh, items, they were called 30 and 31, that were asked to put potentially a liability insurance policy as part of the project in case the wells were contaminated. And um, the planning board basically said they didn't feel like they had guidelines, and they, that was not included as part of the approval of the subdivision as well. Um, my wife spent a lot of time, dug up some very credible information uh, uh, about the fact that that area is, uh, is classified as a uh, seasonally uh, flooded, yep. uh, saturated and flooded uh, area. Um, and if you've lived there like we have over the years, there, uh, there certainly does, we get a lot of water in there, particularly in the spring. And we had concerns just because of where we live that with this construction project, we're not sure where all that water is going to go, and we're still not sure where it's going to go. Um, and, and um, you know, despite all this, despite these, these facts, this, this, this got approved, and, and I sort of, we sort of get that. But I'm, I'm actually taking the advice of uh, Mr. Lassard, who made a few comments that, um, <laughs> there might be lacking some regulations or guidelines around building in areas that are seasonally flooded, heavy wetlands, maybe there's a well nearby. And so I just wanted to come before you folks and kind of express some opinions on, on, on maybe that's something you might want to consider going down the road. Um, and, you know, something around, um, again, something around maybe regulations, uh, new regulations that the planning board could work with <coughs> with their uh, building on wetlands uh, or around a particular well. Uh, maybe regulations if the town does face some potential risk, should there be liability insurance by the developer to protect the town in certain instances because they sounded like there maybe aren't regulations and they, they seemed like they were frustrated with that. Um, and, and, you know, the Conservation Committee, I, I, I mean, I sort of look at that, and again, I'm not real involved with town politics, but 
it, it seems to me that it either has to have more teeth or what's the use if, if they're just being asked to go work with the developers by the planning board to try to come up with a plan to make sure something can get passed. Um, so I, maybe, maybe the conservation committee needs a little more, more, little more teeth behind it. Uh, so when they start evaluating some of these projects. And, um, you know, just to be honest with you, too, um, I found the planning board members, several of them, three or four in particular, <clears throat> to be the most arrogant, um, <coughs> self-serving people. I've, I've, I, I have not sat in a more unprofessional environment in my life. Uh, they, they don't listen to the public. They don't even ask questions. They don't consider certain things. Um, we found it to be a very frustrating uh, experience. Um, you know, like I said, we've been here 21 years. We're, we're law-abiding. We pay our taxes on time. And, um, you know, I, I felt like we were treated um, really quite miserably, to be honest with you. And, um, you know, the, the, the chairman of the committee even made a comment at the end. He sort of lost his cool. I even taped it for you guys, but I won't play it. Um, it's on the TV. I took it off the TV thing. But... Um, you know, he basically said to the, to the people of Hunter Drive that we need to take our own, a taste of our own medicine uh, because we fertilize our lawns and, and you know, if people in this new subdivision are going to fertilize their lawns and that's what could contaminate the wells. And, and to be honest with you, I was stuck between shock and wanting to run up and, <laughs> you, you <didn't> know, <laughs> do something I'd probably be sorry for today. Um, so those are just the points I wanted to make. Uh, if you have any questions, that's fine. If not, I just wanted to come in and get on the record. I was extremely disappointed with a couple of folks on this particular board. Um, you know, it seems like, um, you know, quite frankly, and I'm not implying I don't know anything, but some of them are in the business. Uh, and, and I'm not saying there's any underhandings or, or things that are going on that are illegal, but it, it, it just, it felt... Wrong. The whole thing just felt really miserable, and um, just wanted to share that with you folks. I don't know if there's anything we can do about that development at this point, but I think there's a lot of good reasons why that should have been rejected, and uh, and it wasn't. Thank you. And and just to go a little bit of out, out of order tonight, uh, we do have a liaison to that committee, and that's Mr. Griffin. And yeah. We'll start off with Mr. Yeah. Griffin. Yeah. Well, um, I would like to say that pretty much the planning board makes these regulations, you know. So if you really want to be part of the planning board, this is a good time to step up and put your name out there because we're going to be having elections coming up, and maybe there does need to be some changes. But the planning board are elected, and that's why they're, <clears throat> there's really not a lot that the Board of Selectmen can do for the planning board because they are elected by the people. Um, I'd like to say that... As far as I'm concerned, I probably was going to vote more like what you're suggesting that you would have voted until I heard the water company mm -hmm. say what they said. Mm -hmm. And they may, after listening to them say of how these regulations are this way all over the country, and including even in Massachusetts, the regulations aren't as, you know, they have even lower uh, standards that you can go down to being 250 feet from the wells. Right. I was surprised, and I was surprised that that's the way it is everywhere. <clears throat> so um, I was, you know, probably feeling of going, voting the other way, but after hearing that, I felt like I had to, to vote the way that I did. And I feel that <clears throat> a lot of people there, and the people that you're referring to, you know, their opinions and that. They're the ones that have been there the longest. And they make their interpretations over what they see and what the rules are that are here today. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> the, again, the water company really swayed my vote to vote for the project. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I was going to vote against it. Mm -hmm. um, and they had two people there, and they didn't say anything that made me want to change, you know, to go to their side. Yeah. And I, I really do think that we need more people to serve. So it's a good time to get out there and mm -hmm. become part of the process. Mm -hmm. So so the planning board writes their own rules. They they, is they there, plan. Is there, is, there, is there no oversight of the planning board, like from from, um, from the selectman perspective? No, there isn't. No? Okay. And as far as the Conservation Commission, they're strictly advisory. Mm -hmm. And uh, some, they planning board 
many times does listen to them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes I wish they didn't. But, you know, <laughs> so it's, we need more people like you're a perfect person to come jump up and become part of the process. And that's how things that, are going <laughs> to, well, that's how things are going to change. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it, it's an interesting board. And when you're here, like, like we are, you get to know all of the different people. And there, it is a very interesting board. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And I, you know, and again, I, I mean, we, uh, at least we being my wife and I, and actually even the other members of Hunter <coughs> Drive, we weren't hitching our wagon to the water company. Mm -hmm. We, you know, us in particular, where we are, because we have a very low level near, I mean, you were there that you may not remember, but I did some elevation things and, and I'm very concerned about, you know, I've been there 21 years. I've never had water in my house. Uh, and I'm, I'm serious in that. I, I'm, you know, and, and it got a little contentious there because we did talk about, you know, they had made a comment two months prior to that at, a, at one of the meetings that the only recourse you have once a project is built is legal action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so yep. we wanted to go on the record and say, look, if we get water, we're going to create legal action, okay? Because, you know, we don't have water in our house. Mm -hmm. But if we all of a sudden start getting water in our house, you know, two years from now, once that, once that project is... Uh, is either completed or whatever, then, then I'm going to associate it with that project. Well, it does so, make you wonder quite a bit. I mean, like, you, I've been here for 50 years, and I've watched these things. I can remember when they built Hunter Drive. Pretty yeah. much people felt exactly the same I, about I, Hunter Drive. If I was a neighbor to Hunter Drive, I probably would have been against it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what he was saying about the fertilizer going from Hunter Drive down there. Yeah. But... Maybe the other people won't have to use fertilizer. Yeah, but I don't need are. anybody on a planning board telling me to take my own medicine. No, I know. I got to tell you I right know. now. That, that that's why we was, need more voices. That was the most unprofessional thing I've seen in a long time. Okay, yeah. and so mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I was just very frustrated, and and we were all frustrated over on Hunter Drive. I think with that, there are only four of us that are butters to that. It's not like it's the whole, the whole neighborhood, but. Um, Hey, I, I know you guys are busy. I appreciate the no. time and uh, don't, don't come go in anywhere. Front of you. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go around the board here. Mr. Okay. Okay. Uh, Selectman Griffin, are you? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Included. Selectman Woolsey, please. I want to reinforce what Selectman Griffin is saying. Get him all excited and and the public. I've been here over fifty years as well, and I am also in the neighborhood, and I was as appalled as you are at the meetings because I was there. Uh, in fact, I will say that I was very appalled at the fact that apparently nobody looked at a map when that development came forward. And nobody apparently was aware that there are town wells in back. I did talk to one member of the planning board whom I shall not name. And I said to him, first of all, I'm appalled that you're not doing due diligence, basically, in looking at the geography of the surrounding area when these projects come in. Uh, and furthermore, uh, if I hadn't been sitting there by chance, because I was there for Stowcroft, but if I hadn't been sitting there by chance that evening when 86 Woodland came up, um, I didn't realize that Aquarian hadn't been notified, and I called Carl McMahon the following morning. Uh, to make him aware. Um, I don't want to hear about the way it is everywhere. I don't care what other the states have. I don't care about regulations in other communities. Uh, we have got to protect our water supply. There is nothing more precious than our water supply in this community. I was talking to, to a member of the planning board and I said, you know, Hunter Drive should never have been built. Springhead Lane should never have been built. Think of that, Springhead Lane. What are you talking about? Here. And he said, well, it's kind of hard to turn a developer down when we've already allowed building in that area. Oh, please. Please. I understand that Aquarian is apparently looking into the possible um, purchase of some of the land area around there. Um, I have been working with a few neighborhoods in conjunction with what I've been seeing happening on the planning board. And I would uh, follow up with uh, what Rick said. I am begging uh, neighbors, people with no ties, people who have no dog in the hunt, to step forward and volunteer a little time and run. Run for the planning board. Run for the zoning board. Get your own personal perspective in. And if you don't want the public treated the way you guys were treated, 
and I was there, I saw it, then please file. And it's the last, what, the next <clears throat> two weeks, the town clerk will have the little announcement. You've, you've really got to do that. Um, and unfortunately, it is the planning board that does the, the um, uh, articles and the ordinances for these situations. We have got to stop this. From a personal perspective, I'm going to tell you now, and I'm not bashful about saying it, I, I mentioned liability in some of my comments before the planning board related to this. And who is going to be responsible if those wells become contaminated, particularly in view of the slope of the land in that area? And nobody seemed too excited about answering that. But I will tell you that as one member of this board sitting here, I refuse to vote to accept that road as a public road. I refuse to do that. I hope my other members of the board, when that comes up, will, will join with me. If the developer is insisting on building there and, and the planning board is insisting on allowing that risk, we may all be dead and gone by the time something happens. But we're here to protect this community. And I absolutely refuse to accept that road. Let the developer and let the purchasers of whatever goes in there be responsible for future problems with contamination. Because there's no way, no way to police what individuals who purchase those properties are going to do. This is a, a terrible thing. And I applaud you. Thank you for coming in and your neighbors. And, the, and folks who are coming out of their houses and speaking up on these really, really important issues for this community. Thank you, Doug. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Brown, please come up and sit yes. down. Um, when we were looking at the elevations of this uh, road. Yep. Um, and um, when um, the engineer, Mr. Carnati, was speaking about the road, um, he was saying that all the drainage is going to come off the road and come back into a drainage area in the back. <laughs> now, we're going to get whatever's on Woodland Road coming back through this road, even if these people don't put fertilizer down on their little particular area, anything that washes down Woodland Road is going to come right down that road yes. because that's the way the elevation is. And if you look at the elevation maps, I have the elevation maps, if you look at them, it all slopes downwards to the back. Yep. So you're not only just talking these five lots, you're talking whatever's going to come down that road from Woodland Road. You bet. So, you know, that's something to look at, but we were not able to be heard when we, I don't even know and we're in a butter what they're building back there because we never were told exactly what they were building. I heard it was a single family house and it was supposed to be similar to the house that's there. That is impossible with the amount of room that they have to uh, work with, with all the wetlands back there. Yep. There's no way there's going to be homes that are comparable to that, which to me is, is, is beside the point. Um, it, it's, it's a little narrow, narrow uh, piece yep. of property. It's yep. not even something that you would think a road would go down. I don't know if any of you walked the land there, but I mean, I go back there and I can't even figure how there's going to be house lots and a road coming down that. It's And as Mr. Coronati, he, he said it was a bowling size, uh, a bowling um, lane. lane type of property <laughs> by his own words. So, I mean, I... Yeah. We were told to go to the well, founding yeah, fathers. So, I mean, I guess we thought we, that was you guys. We don't know who it is. I mean, I think they're all. I guess dead. the original ones are dead, right? But um, <laughs> we, we feel like we have no recourse. And after paying taxes in this um, town for 21 years, I I feel like I should have been able to voice my opinions. And I I did not feel I felt like I was ridiculed any time I got up and said anything. And uh, that's a terrible feeling. It really is. They don't like me either, so you're, you're going <laughs> to no, <that> really? company. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we just yeah. wanted to come so. and say our piece. And um, yeah, we don't know if anything can be done. And again, 
you know, we were leaving it up to Aquarian to be able to make the regulations or whatever, what it had to do with the wells. We're concerned about water. We're concerned about water coming down that road and coming into our property, which is lower yep. than the lots that they are building. There's one other thought, too. Pa pardon me, okay, um, yes. Mr. Well, Bridal. No, I just want to thank you for coming in and yep. thank you for at least bringing it, bringing it to the forefront. Uh, there's little this board can do. Yes, but, I know. I know. But, but that, that's the tough part. But at least you should be able to be heard. Yeah. And Thank it you. should be respectful. Yeah. And I'm sorry that, that didn't happen at a previous board. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks. And for let me listening. just get Mr. Woodell, and we're going to go back around for seconds, sir. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. And uh, you know, it's always difficult when there's a development going on and it's going to affect your property. Passions get get high and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the as Rick said. The planning board is an elected board, mm -hmm. and I would just advise, even if you don't want to run yourself, yeah. find somebody to run. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that's the thing, to get together yeah. and get somebody on the board. I will say that sometimes a board member reacts to somebody in the public thinking maybe humorously is something and it comes mm -hmm. across incorrectly. It wasn't humorous. I, well, I don't <laughs> think people really... I mean, I think if you were to, to talk to somebody, I, I think they would, and say, yeah, I was insulted, I think an individual board member would, would apologize. So I, I'm going to just say that, that I hope it was, you know, I'm going to say it, my feeling was that it was a mistake that they did that, that you treated badly, and that hopefully it wouldn't happen again, and hopefully we don't treat anybody badly. Thank you. Yeah, just really quickly. Thank you. Former Selectman <laughs> and Moderator John Walker, whose property is adjacent to mm -hmm. this proposed build, uh, and I have been friends for a long time, and I was talking to John before one of the meetings, and he pointed out that when Hunter Drive was built, he and Dr. Bartolini had 21 acres. And I think there are 12 houses on that. This is five acres. It's a little right. ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to call you when filing <laughs> date comes up. And Mr. Griffin, back to you. I'm serious. I just okay. wanted to say now, I want to make it clear that you were clear, you were able to be heard. You were you talk there. I did. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, just so that people might be listening to think that you weren't allowed to talk, you definitely no, talked I, I, there. I did. I yes, did. did. But you know, yeah. the information that I gave, I had put, I had handouts, I had everything. Nobody asked one question right. about anything right. that I handed <laughs> out or whatever. Nobody even looked at it. It no, was I, like, okay, yeah. on to the next yeah. thing. I think people looked at it because I know I looked at it. I know exactly what you're talking about. You did do a lot of uh, mm -hmm. work and you presented these little right. maps or whatever. Um, and I just want to say, as far as Mary Louise's, nobody knows that those wells are there. That's not true. Everyone at the zoning board knows those wells are there. Well, they never sent a query well, in notice. They did know, they? everybody there knows that. Everyone that lives in Hampton knows those wells are no. there that have lived here for any amount of time. You know, that's the well area or whatever they call it. The, <laughs> what's it referred Aquifer. to as? The aquifers. Um, and uh, the. It's, I have one more point and I can't remember what it was right now, but um, I know, I, I feel for you, I was there and saw it, and, and it does get very heated. Um, yeah, but, many but, times. But you know, but you know what, you know what it but is, it Mr. Griffin? Yeah, but you know, it, know what it is, you know what it is, personal. is that you shouldn't sit on a board like that if you're going to tell somebody that, that you don't want to be threatened or something like that. Mm -hmm. like, like then, then you know what? Don't well, do it. People, don't do it. I think that, that people from the board felt that they were being threatened by comments that were coming, that, well, that were like we, a threat. Oh, we from, did threaten them. Well, yeah. you know, I know, and that's what they hate. Let me <laughs> no, tell you, no, that no, always works against you at any board but, here. Yeah, in but, but, that, but we only did that because that's Mr. what they Mr. said that's was what happened. Now I kind of remember well, Okay, it. let me yeah. just tell you, Mr. Emmerich. Threats don't work Yeah, but Mr. Emmerich said he said he lives in that neighborhood too by the way well he lives on, on the shore. Shore. well not far yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I live um, close to yeah lives. his daughter lives there is what I wanted to say on that street your street on I, drive? I don't think so, so no no she lives on well, Great Gate yeah you're right Great but it's still away. the same area yeah. and he's yeah. he he works with all of these that's why it that's what makes these boards great is to have all kinds of different people there I do remember what I wanted to say 
that land was for sale, and there's other lands for sale. And you know, Aquarian Water isn't a small little company. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest companies in Australia that runs Aquarian Water. They should buy that land surrounding those wells. I, I, think, I think that that's where the tragedy of this situation, or right. potential tragedy, is they, they should have bought that land up years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they don't seem to care to do that. But you know, um, one thing I want to say is the reason why we came on saying that uh, we would have a lawsuit or whatever is because Mr. Emmerich himself said that was the only recourse that we had. Right. And that's what it is right now, actually. That's what, but that's yeah. what he said. He told us that. So, and then he said that we threatened him with what he told us to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a little. Well, it was a, yeah. All right. And in concluding remarks, Mr. Brown. We are. <laughs> concluding remarks. I, I would just say that, uh, as you know, are you from Philadelphia? Uh, pretty close. I think you were. I'm, 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 I'm not, impressed. I'm, I'm not worried about you. He's so, a um, Philadelphia <laughs> lawyer. I'm not, I'm not worried about you, Mr. Brown, nor you, Mrs. Brown. But um, <laughs> democracy is not a, uh, a spectator sport. There's been great comments. It, mm -hmm. it, uh, it's a little bit uh, um, precedent setting for folks to come in and talk about an, another board mm -hmm. and, uh, and to right. do that. I say to Chairman Olson, I say to the planning board, they do good work. I say, in my own experiences as, as an elected government official and a public uh, employee in the past, it's, it's not easy going. Um, and you can't be thin skinned. But I, I do uh, commend you on your tactful and considerate uh, uh, exercise of your of your rights to come in here tonight and that uh, the planning board does good work and I'm sure that uh, there will be plenty of opportunities to serve in the future for both of you. And thank you for coming in tonight. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if you jump in, they'll treat you good when you go there no matter what you vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Night. Roman 6, Town Manager's Report. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Uh, structure work here. The Department of Public Works has announced the collection of Christmas trees will take place during the week of January 5 through January 9th. Just happens to be this week, Monday through Friday. Please place your trees at the curb uh, with your trash on the normal collection day. The last day in time for the filing of petitioned warrant articles is 5 p.m. on January 13, 2015. Those must be filed with the Selectman's Office before that time and date. Uh, public hearing for town and school budgets and warrant articles is January 14th, 2015. The snow date will be January 20th. The deliberative session of town meeting is January 31st, 2015. Thank That's you, it, sir. Questions for the town manager, Slick Mosey? Um, nothing that I can think of at the moment. Wow, you're having a good week. Mr. Griffin? <laughs> no, thank you. Thanks for your report. Thanks for your Thank you. There you go. Oh, thank you. Romans, I'm refusing to sign. I understand. Romans 7, new business. And Mr. Welch, these are, uh, they're, they're important uh, items, uh, but they, they do deal in your realm. Would you lead us uh, 1 through 5, and then Mr. Sullivan will handle 6, and we'll come back to you for some. I would be very happy to, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Item number 1 is the vote to implement RSA 32 colon 5, <laughs> Roman, uh, Roman 5. A, tally I have, votes. I have the text on that. Uh, well, so do I. I, oh. I, I stole it. <laughs> well, oh. not the motion, but oh. I stole the text. Um, that particular section of law, and we've done this every year now for a number of years, uh, the article shall contain a notation <coughs> of whether or not that appropriation is recommended by the governing body. And if there is a budget committee, a notation of whether or not it is recommended by the budget committee. Mm. What happens here, and, and we, we do have a motion for you that was drafted by town council, yep. um, move pursuant to the authority in RSA 32 colon 5, Roman 5A, uh, that the board require that all votes of the budget committee and of the board of selectmen relative to budget items on any warrant articles be recorded votes, and the numerical tally of each such vote should be printed in town warrant next to the affected warrant article. That's what he recommended for the article, uh, the motion, if you decide to pass this particular article. I so move. Second. Griffin, further discussion? Yep. All those in favor? Unanimous. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, uh, we have a tentative date for uh, the board to meet. Um, 
uh, for the petition warrant articles. As you know, the warrant articles close at 5 o'clock on January 13th. Um, we're proposing that you meet at 5.30 on that date to um, recommend or not recommend uh, on particular warrant articles that are submitted by petition. They have to be submitted to the Budget Committee at public hearing the following night, the 14th. Yeah. So there's not a lot of deliberative time here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's even worse when we get down to the end of the month uh, because we've got <coughs> hearings on the 21st. Um, you have to have a special meeting on the 23rd, and you have to we have to distribute the warrant on the 26th, which is the following Monday. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just as a tentative item, we'd like at least your tentative approval to allow us to post a meeting for the board to meet at 5:30 on the 13th. Should there be petition warrant articles that you have not taken care of? That right. came in on the last day. Yeah, okay. new petition article. Yes. So, uh, if everyone can check their calendar, and make sure that um, I'm we, fine we are with that. If if does everybody have to be there? All three. Of us? You need three. At least, at least three. Okay, because I cannot be there. I will be there. I know that. My we'll ca carry on without you, Jim. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Just one of those little things in life. Yeah. yeah. What, what time? Five thirty. Uh, Five thirty p.m. Yeah. on a Friday. Uh, Tuesday. No. Tuesday. 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 Next Tuesday. Is that a good day or a bad day? We can make it a different time. Yeah, six o'clock is better for me. Six o'clock. No problem with six. Six o'clock. Wonderful Tuesday. Tuesday. As long as I get a school board meeting at seven, so thirteenth. We'll talk fast. We'll promise to get you out there. We'll so be and, here, so you'll be a and we'll get a call if there are no. Correct. That's correct. Coming in. Yeah, very, we don't very rarely, we very rarely receive a petition of warrant on the last day. Yeah. It's, it's kind of unusual. Uh, date for the approval and signing of the 2015 warrant. Uh, we are suggesting to the board that um, the warrant needs to be signed on Monday, excuse me, on Friday, the 23rd of January. It must be posted on Monday so we before only your meeting time. Okay. So um, there's just no way to do it with the planning board having a possible public hearing on the 21st, which is Wednesday, submitting their completed articles by Tuesday the 22nd, uh, preparing the warrant for sometime during the day on the 23rd for signature by the board, and then posting it on the following Monday before your meeting. Uh, there's not a lot of time to work with here. So you want us in when? Uh, I would think probably, Friday afternoon? probably in the afternoon. If okay. that's convenient. Thank you. For Jim. Yeah. 6 23 p.m. What time? Uh, that's kind of what I'm looking for direction from the board on. What time would be convenient? Uh, anything on for Friday me. Friday afternoon for the anything board. Anything for in. me, too. Just Rick? Call. Uh, which day? What? Friday? 1 23. The 23rd. 23rd. What, what time would be? 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock is fine with me. On the Friday the 23rd? Yep. Okay. So is that PM. Well, we that's don't fine need with me? To meet, can we just go? Do we need to meet? You or? actually need to have a meeting to sign the warrant. Oh, okay. All so right. We'll Six just, p.m. Just, that's your only purpose. Would we'll be you'll probably be here for five minutes, and that's it. Okay. Six p.m. Uh, the next item is a waiver of the purchasing policy. We yeah. we, we sent out bids for low sulfur diesel fuel. Uh, we do this annually, and we we seem to have a perpetual problem with this annually. Uh, these Bids come in, and there's only one bidder. Um, in this case, Atlantic Fuel Incorporated. They, they were the bidder. Um, the total estimated annual annual cost is twenty-three thousand and forty dollars. Um, they have been a supplier steadily for the town and have not defaulted in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, they also supply the town of Rye and the Pease Development Authority uh, Division of Portsmouth Division in Portsmouth of Rye Harbor mm -hmm. uh, and the um, Moran Towing Corporation in Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had no problems with them whatsoever, but because it's only one bid and it's the only one we've received, and we have rebid this before in prior years, yeah. and only received that one bid back again. So we would ask the board for a waiver yeah. uh, to uh, approve the bid. I'll move to authorize the waiver. Second. No second. Waddell, second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, item number five is the acceptance of a fiduciary deed for two parcels of salt marsh land. And this is a Cogger, uh, the Cogger Trust. Uh, these were donated to the Conservation Commission, and by statute, the Planning Board, or the, excuse me, the Board of Selectmen has to approve that donation for land. So move, acceptance. Second. Gentlemen, all those in favor? 
All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. I yield the floor to the Mr. Sullivan manager. You got me. Uh -huh. Number six is ratification of tentative agreements for fire unions local 2664 and local 3017 collective bargaining agreements. Mr. Sullivan, please. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, <coughs> pardon me. I'm here to present to you uh, to the public uh, the negotiated um, tentative agreements between these two fire unions. Mm -hmm. um, just as a, an overview for the public who may not know, um, we got a late start this year as a result of the tragedy that the town befell the town with our assistant town attorney. Um, and the board made the decision to uh, approach the negotiations somewhat differently than we had in the past and forego hiring of outside labor counsel as a negotiator and decided to do that in-house with a team of uh, Mr. Bean, Mr. Geralt, and myself. Mm -hmm. uh, we met with the unions um, and uh, very quickly were able to uh, negotiate a contract that we present to you tonight to the board uh, with regard to um, settling uh, both 2664 and 3017. In general broad strokes, I would say that uh, uh, two things that I think has been pointed out by the, by the chairman previously, that uh, the savings that was uh, a result of not having to utilize Labor Council for negotiations was helpful, and I think it's a, a good strategy moving forward. We were able to settle these contracts as two-year contracts as general broad overstrokes. Um, overall raise is a 2% raise in each of the two years of the contract. Uh, there are some differences between the two contracts. Mr. Chairman, would you like me to go through them in specifics individually? At, at your... Very good. Uh, yes, with regard to the uh, Supervisors Association, which is uh, local 3017, um, there are a number of changes that we made. <coughs> the cost items, I'll uh, go through those and highlight them specifically. There were a number of language changes we made uh, that were beneficial to both parties. Um, and I'll go through those. One of them is in, uh, we've agreed to, to take a look at uh, the hours of work uh, in the area that deals with the um, fire prevention, fire inspection. Uh, we've all noted that there's um, some backlog issues there, and we want to study what's the best and most effective way. Currently, there are uh, four 10-hour days, uh, but the union has agreed to sit down with us and study that. Um, it's going to be our recommendation that we approach that in a memorandum of under, uh, MOU okay. and attachment as opposed to putting specific language in. Uh, but they were on board with trying to find the most efficient, efficient way to, to do that for the town. Um, in, an, in the area of the sick bank and the sick leave, uh, <coughs> Article 20, uh, the sick leave section or sick bank section, this is an area that's uh, long been in the contracts. There were some issues that we uh, dealt with. Uh, these We reduced the number of hours that um, um, can't go into that bank, uh, made some adjustments because there's been some changes with regard to the number of units in the town that contribute. Mm -hmm. So we made some adjustments in there. They're really not a financial impact necessarily, but there's some adjustments we made in that. Uh, in addition to add some language to allow uh, individuals who are in the bank, if it's medically appropriate and uh, it's appropriate to do so, to bring them back on a light duty status uh, to allow them to recuperate and get them back to work quicker. We felt that was an appropriate thing. Um, and additionally, there's uh, some other changes we made in there with regard to um, better defining uh, some areas that were not so clear and previous that led to some uh, 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 some grievances. And again, each of these necessarily don't uh, have dollar signs in them uh, in the end, but I wanted to highlight them for everyone. Um, health insurance, again, this is a big issue that we're, we're all looking forward to the, uh, the future. Um, and we need to get our hands around the uh, impacts of the Affordable Care Act. Unions agreed to sit down with the town uh, and to further negotiate with all the unions in town uh, the, the best goal to alleviate the impact of that on the community. Mm -hmm. um, again, not an impact necessarily there uh, for financial, but I thought we felt it was a uh, strong uh, agreement of the party to move forward with. Uh, there was a uh, change to uh, 3017 and added longevity pay, previously not existed in this unit, um, and the unit felt that that was an appropriate thing to do, as well as uh, made an adjustment in the salary schedule, as I indicated before. Generally, the raises throughout their steps are 2%. 2%. Um, we made a wage adjustment to a member of that unit who was a fire prevention secretary. Um, that was... Uh, we felt substantially below what the appropriate level of equivalent positions within the town, so we made an adjustment uh, of a wage there. Yeah. Um, and in, in the education and training incentives, we had some discussions with regard to um, incenting them, um, and so we added an issue in there about um, having those folks uh, get some uh, education training incentive for uh, doing credit hours, associate's degree, or bachelor's degree, which is similar in other 
uh, units within the town. The duration of the agreement is a two-year agreement. Um, and in addition, there was some language that we put in there with regard to uh, town policy that we already do with the 457 plans um, to memorialize that. Yeah. That really is the extent of the 3017. Any questions with regard to that, Mr. Chair? Second Wilson, questions? No problem. Uh, actually, because having saved money in negotiations this year, that saving goes to the future because this is a two-year contract, so there will be no need for negotiations in 2016 as well. For these units, that's correct. Correct. And uh, have has have both or either of these been ratified by the unions? My understanding is that will be completed tomorrow. Okay. So, we'll so we get can get to that, the language of what I would recommend for the board right. uh, after we go through the other unit. But uh, anything specific questions with regard to 37? No, I think you <coughs> folks did an excellent job on both. Um, so we'll have these before us next week after they're ratified? No, I would be recommending to you at the end that you vote to uh, approve them based upon a contingent upon the ratification vote taking place. We're running up against deadline issues. Uh, we have drafted with council what that warrant article will look okay. like. We have every confidence that they're going to ratify. We've okay. had discussions with, with uh, union attorneys, and we feel comfortable just about doing it. We've, wait, we've had the unions ratify before selectmen sign. I just want to make sure we're yes, on solid ground. I believe we are, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and I can quickly, if there's no other questions in 3017, I can go over 2664. Yeah. Many of the language issues are the same. Yeah. Um, the big issues uh, different for this unit are, are dealing with within their steps. Um, there are a number of steps within there as they progress through their years of service. Uh, we made some adjustments to that step. Mm -hmm. Generally, they were 5% increments. And uh, what we did was made some adjustments to add additional steps, but to spread that increment instead of 5%, it was 2.5, 2.5. Effectively, what that means is, yes, some members during, uh, in the first year of the contract, actually, there's some savings to the town compared to previous ones, but uh, it catches up in the second year. Um, we felt that that was an appropriate thing. It takes that same amount, uh, but just spreads it over a, a longer period or gives an additional step to it. Um, really, that's the only differential between there. Again, it was a nine-year and a 15-year. There were additional steps to what was already existing. Their duration is also a two-year duration, and the language changes are very similar to the ones that we made uh, in the supervisor's union. In general, um, that's the impact. I would uh, also indicate to you that we have the uh, financial let me pull this out, the impact financially. Are. We've also drafted, I believe the board's been presented earlier this evening with uh, what is the recommended language for the CBAs to go forward. It would be Article 13 and Article 14. Article 13 has a total impact over the two years <coughs> of 163,679. Um, the two years for Article 14, which would be the fire officers, would be $88,048 over the two-year period. Yeah. Okay. Any questions, sir? Yeah. Board, any no. questions? Excellent. Uh, Wonderful. And then f would you frame that motion? Because, again, uh, due, due to Wanda's untimely passing, we were up against it. We're up against it now. Okay. So could you frame that motion for both of these contracts? For us tonight, I please? would. I would indicate that uh, the board first approve um, um, the agreement contingent upon the ratification of both units. Mm -hmm. uh, and separate from that, then I would ask the board to approve the language as proposed and presented to the board previously for Article 13 and Article 14. And once that contingency is met, that is the ratification that we move it on to the Budget Committee for their review. Thank you. Also move, Mr. Chairman. I think we should move one at a time, move Article 13. Let's go with uh, Mr. Sullivan's motion. Well. And there's a there's second. a. And a second. All those in favor? So wait, so what are we doing? What both together? Mr. Sullivan just made. I just a, want to clarify. Yeah, I would I would recommend that you uh, approve. If you want to take them separate, that's fine. It's not an issue. Uh, I would uh, recommend that you approve the um, agreement mm -hmm. uh, publicly. We we've discussed this previously, and then I would ask that you vote the, each of those warrant articles as presented to you. Uh, on to the okay, so budget. the first motion that, that you made was to, to approve uh, contingent upon ratification for both local 2664 and local 3017. Oh, okay. Okay. We've got a motion, we've got a second. All those in favor? Okay. And now please for 13 and 14. And I would ask that you move uh, the proposed wording that is before you for Articles 13 and Articles 14. Move them forward to the warrant. Thank you. A motion? Yes, I'll so move. Second. Wolsey Woodell. 
All those in favor? Yeah. Good night, Jamie. Mr. Thank Sullivan, you outstanding much. job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Welch. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I have seven uh, deals with uh, the Keith Avenue development. Uh. There were two, uh, well, I'll call them bonds for a lack of a better terminology. There were two bonds that were taken on this, one by the planning board for $20,000 for off-site improvements. The planning board has voted to return that money. Uh, there was a second one taken for $55,488 uh, by the Board of Selectmen. The planning board did not take a bond on the main uh, subdivision. Yeah. Uh, and uh, rather than having to reopen the hearing all over again, it was decided that the selectmen would take it. And they did, so we have a letter of credit in that amount of money. Uh, we are recommending to the board that $50,488.14 be returned to the developer and $5,000 be held until such time as the remaining work in the, in the subdivision is completed in the spring. If the, and this deals with planting uh, against the wetlands, there were some specialized plants that were required to be planted. They did not come up. They were done, but they did not come up, so they had to be repeated. Um, the $5,000 is security to make sure that's done. That would be the recommendation that we hold 5000 of the current letter of credit. Thank you. 50488 be returned. Questions for Mr. Welch on this specific issue? And that would be a motion that we are required to do that, or is this a consensus issue? No, this is a motion, sir. Thank you. Uh, Incorporating your comments into the motion, is there a motion? I'll make the motion that he presented. Mr. Bridal, seconded by? I'll second it. Mr. Waddell, any further discussion? All those in favor? That's, that's an affirmative? I'm opposed. And an opposed. And one opposed, four to one. The motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank Roman you. Roman eight, old business. One, preambulation, no, no, no. alpha. Per ambulation. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm reading it specifically, yes. <laughs> Spell check. Uh, the <laughs> Sorry about that. Not pre, it's per. <laughs> the Hampton Seabrook boundary. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, um, this was last done seven years ago. The current statute requires that the bounds of the individual cities and towns in the state of New Hampshire be walked every seven years. It's RSA Chapter 51. There are actually four boundary points between the town of Hampton and the yeah. town of Seabrook. Uh, one is in the ocean. One is in the middle of the harbor. There is one right next to uh, Route 1A, and there is one in the... Uh, uh, the concrete protective well, uh, which protects uh, the bound rock right. um, off of one of the streets in the, uh, in the uh, uh, south side of the river in uh, Sun Valley. Those should be done. The statute requires that the oldest town send notice to the youngest town uh, with the shared boundary, and that the youngest town uh, set a time and date to review the bounds and to file a report. We've already got the report done, but we just need to know who's going to do it, and and uh, we have to uh, get authority to notify the uh, the abutting towns on the board. Well, why don't you just issue the order, Mr. Wilch? And I'm ready to go. Make it happen. I volunteer. Just okay. Grid coordinates, time hack, and we'll get it done. We'll get it done then. Thank okay. You, sir. Very good, sir. Mr. Scuba Diver, yeah. Uh, you won't find the bound. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Number two, dredge the harbor. <laughs> Number two, draft warrant articles, alpha updated warrant. Mr. Chairman, you have the updated warrant that was issued today. Um, we have revised the article for um, High Street. High Street drainage. Excellent. Uh, one of the things that we were concerned about was the amount of money that's involved in this which is uh, in the area of four hundred, more than $400,000. Uh, so in reviewing this, the exact $449,000. Um, in reviewing this, it seemed to me that we should add a second contingency. And I'm, I'm proposing tonight that we do that. Uh, <coughs> that's an awful lot of money to leave on the table should the appropriation pass, but it'd be too little 
uh, in accordance with the, the public bids that we have to secure. So mm -hmm. uh, I added, this drainage work shall be publicly bid. This article is contingent upon the receiving of $149,156 in offsetting FEMA revenues to be applied against the total requested appropriation. Uh, so I ordered the portion about publicly bidding, and then I ordered if the offset revenues are not received or the public bids are in excess of the appropriation and receipt of FEMA revenues prior to the setting of the tax rate for the calendar year 2015, then the appropriation contained in this article shall be null and void. So Excellent. if we go out to bid and it comes back for more than the amount of money that's here yes. plus, the, plus the federal funds, then uh, we're not obligated on that basis to raise and appropriate yep. almost half a million dollars and just frankly sit on it. Mm -hmm. Not being able to do yeah. the work. Silicon Wilson. Very well done. Now I I have a lot more uh, faith in this article with that adjustment. I appreciate uh, Fred's work on that. Mr. Griffin. Actually, are we moving this evening on the final, or are, are these still uh, temporary until next week? They're Pardon. still temporary until next week. Oh, okay. Well, I am very comfortable with supporting this article. Thank, thank you very much, ma'am. And just going around, Mr. Bartle. Question. All set. Thank you. It's good. Yeah. Okay, great. Good. So, is other old business? Oh. Other old business? Is that it for the articles? Unless somebody has something I want to discuss. We are going to put Pumper, we really are, next to Article 15, right? Yes. Yeah. Bless the word Pumper is going to go in there. Okay. So people know it's not a ladder truck. Right. Um, have we any sense yet of the, um, let's see, I'm looking for the traffic control, Article 29. Do we have any sense from Christy yet whether we have funds available to do that so we don't have to have that article? I'm expecting to have that information sometime late tomorrow. Okay. So we'll know by next week yes. whether or not we need to pull that. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't want to have any unnecessary articles. Oh, no. We're working diligently to try to... Uh, On the warrant. Clear everything up that needs to be cleared up before your next meeting. Okay. And I have one more question on the trust fund. Um, let me see. Article. Capital Reserve, I think it's Article 34. Capital Reserve, Capital funds. reserve funds. Uh, and I see that the, the um, Budget Committee has included, or we, or we recommended that 1500 be included to cover the investment expenses of the trustees of the trust <coughs> funds? Yes. Um, that was their estimate of what it would cost. I haven't had to time report. to research, but it's always <coughs> been my understanding that the trustees of the trust funds can basically, now, now this, I don't know if this purpose fits in there, but the trustees of the trust funds who, who have always put a limited amount in the annual budget mm -hmm. have the right to expend what they need to expend in the course of their duties. Is, is, would that factor in here? I don't believe they have that authority. You know, I thought no. they, I thought they were allowed to spend what they needed no, they to spend. They can only spend what's appropriated uh, or what's allowed by statute. They're allowed to manage certain investment funds with investment income. Right. What they were doing is they were using the investment income to manage these funds and the Attorney General Office, I believe, said they can't do that. So they're asking, and they've had the, the between the AG and everybody else, okay. they've had this statute passed, and it requires an appropriation in order to do the work. Okay, good. So this will be a little adjustment in the manner in which the trustees of the trust fund's line account is showing in the annual operating budget, because this will probably be an ongoing... Next year, they'll have to put money in to take care of the problem. And yes. So this is an article basically to open the door to get another line in the trustees. And to account. accept the statute to allow them to do it. Okay. Okay. I just wondered. All right. Are you all set, Select Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just wanted to ask Fred a question on your old business. Um, it, now, for a, a elderly person that gets... Um, you know, a tax deferral or credit? Yes. Do they have to apply for that every year? No. Um, Five years? 
There are incremental break points in that statute. There are three of them. And um, what happens is when you change from one break point to another, the assessing office is required to inquire as to whether or not the person is still there, whether they still own the property. Uh, they're supposed to do a little investigation. So when you go from, let's say you turn age 80, that's the, that's the high break point. Uh, uh, they need to review that to make sure the person, in fact, is the current owner, or there may be someone mm -hmm. else who they've deeded the property to, yeah. in which case the exemption goes away. Yeah. So what happens if it's a, uh, if it's a person that's 80 yeah. years old and they die and the wife is 77? She retains the lower. She, she, she's going to have to refile. But she would retain the next lower until she got to age 80. And so she, does she have to refile because of a death? In a lot of cases, yes. In a lot of cases, no. It depends on how the original filing was. Uh, in some cases, there was two people in the filing. So we try to arrange it so nobody loses what they, what they have. If maybe she has to fill some paperwork out just to clear it up. Mm -hmm. So if, she, if, if it was her time to, uh, to redo it, she'd be notified? As a general rule, that's what happens. If, if, but I would, I, I'd never take a chance. I'd call. <laughs> yeah. I gotta be very honest with you. I'd call because things can fall between the cracks sometimes, yeah. and we have yeah. at least two file cabinets, four drawer file cabinets, full of folks who receive exemptions of one form or another or tax credits. Yeah. And it's, you, you're trying to remember every single one of those as they occur, and not all the deaths get reported to us because they may happen in other jurisdictions. Yeah. So we don't get the filing until it's a probate, which could be a year and a half later. So who has that information if there's when that was would have been done? That's the assessing office. It's the assessing office. So if the person didn't really know, she could go there to the assessing office and find out. Or call them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And if she has a problem, please call my office. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further old business? Thank you. Closing comments? Seeing none, a motion to adjourn yeah. at 20. Yeah. So, oh, pardon me. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I would request that the board, in accordance with the provisions of RSA 91A colon 3 Roman 2 subsection C, go into a non public session in accordance with that statute. Thank you. So moved. Second. Second. We need a roll call. You do. Bridal Wilson. All right. It's unanimous, so therefore, <laughs> no roll call is needed. Thank you very much. I just want to do a quick report to the board. Won't take a couple okay. minutes. Thank you, Mr. Welch. <coughs> Was it Thank Mary you, Mr. Louise? Chairman. Nice job. No, she doesn't. She no. This is one she doesn't sign. Oh, she doesn't sign. She's she's opposed to the uh, oh. agreement with the state.